clearly the police are taking it very seriously. Uh, apparently there are a, a real number of them up there. They've put up one of those forensic tents um, and they're digging away. But they are being very vague about what they have or have not found. Why do you think that is? I think the sensitivity for the remaining family. So I've been very aware not to let anybody know. It's been completely confidential. There's a very small team. Uh, the landowner, obviously, has been a brilliant, uh, an absolute um, star. That's the only way I can put this. Very supportive of me. Um, I, um, I think we just didn't want to alert. It. Obviously, it's gone. But, um, I won't say the word ballistic, but the, story, the news has exploded. We were more sensitive to his family, specifically his brother, who's, you know, I, I, one of the only remaining family members alive. And we certainly didn't want to give him any false hope or upset him in any way. Um, and I think this is what um, the police are doing as well. Mm. But, you know, if, if you see the photographic evidence that we've got, you'll clearly see that what we've got, what I am, I don't know because I'm not in touch with the police, um, is that I don't know what they're finding, but I don't know why they haven't found this piece of evidence that we clearly have because, of course, um, we've left all, everything in, in situ because, obviously, it's a live crime scene. Mm. Uh, I've dedicated these, this time of my life to do this because before I solved the identity of Jack the Ripper through DNA, and this was my second case that I wanted to take the challenge on, uh, it was justice for Keith. It was closure for the family, and, more, and again, as I say, not more significantly, but I wanted to beat Ian Brady, who set out to create the most perfect murder from a Leopold and Loeb case back in the early 20th century, and his obsession with a film and book called Compulsion. Look, I've, I've got to ask you, because I mean, a lot of people are wondering, that, I mean, the police have been searching for Keith for decades now, and obviously it's, it's waned over recent decades, but you know, Winnie kept that pressure on to an extent. What has actually led you to this particular site? Oh, well, that's, that's, that's very easy. Everybody's been looking in the wrong place. They've been looking at Hoe Grain in Shiny Brook, uh, where Myra Hindley said uh, they, they, they took Keith. But um, I've been held by um, one of the foremost authorities on the story, and she, she gave me all the information many, many years ago. Our paths crossed on the Ripper work, actually. And when I said our pathways were meant to cross, because I spoke to her only the other day, um, she gave me information that really led me, again, like a detective story, the same with the, with Jack the Ripper. Uh, putting the pieces together, Ian Brady told me Peter Toppin, after the first visit, that he wanted to go out and specifically look at Eagle Rock, the Greystones, and the view of the reservoir. And when the landowner took me out to show me the, the murder scenes where the bodies were discovered, and I've got to say, I'm very sympathetic to this. So this, uh, you know, this is something I'm not just doing for the glory. You know, these were little children. Mm. Um, they pointed out Eagle Rock to me, and it all just fitted in that Keith's got to be um, near John, uh, John Kilbride, the second victim. Um, and when I said to Chris, sorry, the landowner, the very first time, could I have permission to go on the land? I firmly believe that the boys are buried one side and the girls the other. And something that really, yeah, sorry, just to bear with me with the light. Uh, something that's very significant was car parking spaces. Because if you, I, I'm sure, as you said, um, and that uh, it, uh, Saddleworth Road, the A635, is only two lane traffic. So one going the other. So you're not going to park your car on the main road. So you're going to park your car to the side. And where one parking place is, that's where John is, and now where we found the evidence of Keith's remains. And on the other side, around the corner of Holland Brown Knoll, where they did find um, Leslie Ann Downey, just at the top, that was a car park. So that was all how I put it together.